Hi there, I'm Preso. And I'm Macca. And today we're going to give you an update on the Franken lathe. So since our last video, we've actually finished off all of the electrics and we've got the motor upgrade done. Uh, in the last video, you would have seen we had a single phase motor, uh, but we found that it was a non-reversible motor and unfortunately it was running in reverse. So with the upgrade, we now have a 0.75 kilowatt three phase motor and we have a Invitec variable frequency drive. Uh, with this we can get forward reverse, we can get uh, infinitely variable speed uh, at 150 hertz. Uh, that's the maximum speed we can run the motor at at this stage. Uh, and that's enough for standard wood turning, but running at about 70 hertz, we can use the electric planer head, which you can see just here. The planer head allows us to trim the log, get rid of all the knots, all the high spots, and make it cylindrical. Uh, after that we take the plane head off and we put a standard tool rest and you can do normal hand turning on the log. Also I should mention that this uh, project was for a, uh, a friend of ours uh, who was a, a tree lopper. Uh, it was his desire to be able to take large pieces of timber and put them into a machine and accurately turn them down to a, a given diameter and he intends to use these to make outdoor furniture. So. Between Mac and myself, Mac did all the welding, I did most of the engineering, uh, and this is the result. And what we're going to do now is we'll take you through step by step some of the, the features of the lathe and how they came about. The tail stock and the tool slide all came from an old lathe that they had a Russian lathe from the 1950s, and this had a, uh, a base on it that you could hardly lift, it was so heavy. So we eradicated all of that and we, uh, we built our own tail stock function. All of this UB here was pieces. I had pieces and we bought, we bought $20 worth of a couple of pieces being the vertical there and part of the, the bed itself. So the bed's 1800 long and the height of this is about 700 so the, the height of the, um, the tool rest it will be exactly centre at um, 725 in, in height. Uh, and, uh, and we've got this here, which is the, this came from a, uh, the front wheel of a Toyota four-wheel drive, and they took it off because they didn't want four-wheel drive constantly on the, uh, on the Toyota. So I saw this at my local uh, motor mechanics, and he gave it to me, and this is what is our pivot point for this, which has been exceptional. Now all of this here came, the chain drive and the sprockets all came from, uh, a garage down at um, Gippy Terrace was mobile service station where this used to run the, the automatic car wash and this was part of the thing, it was all thrown out and I never throw anything out so I was, a, I was very very fortunate enough to get all this stuff. The, uh, the planer head that we've used here is just a, a standard electric planer, this one's actually quite old. Uh, as such it was, it was in my tool cupboard and I decided to update it with a new one. Um, the reason for the angle is to give us a shearing cut as we're cutting. So the, the plane ahead is actually not cutting across the full length of the, the tungsten carbide tip blades. The, um, the handle was removed and I 3D printed a little switch case at the back here. Uh, we just got a standard rocker switch to start and stop the, the plane ahead. Uh, because of the positioning and the angle, we soon realised that the chute was going to direct all of the waste shavings directly at the operator who stands at the other end of the machine. So this little sheet metal deflector here is just simply to throw the shavings over the back of the lathe. The planer head is also indexed using a, a screw here so that once it fits in to the socket, we can tighten that screw up and it uh, actually indexes the planer head around so it's exactly parallel to the log. This entire planer can come out and we have a standard wood turning tool rest that goes back in its place so that you can hand turn and hand shape the log if you wish. So what I'll do now is just give you a quick demo of the, the variable speed drive. Um, these units are amazing things, they can be programmed uh, to take whatever settings that you want. As I say this motor normally would run at 50 cycles a second. But I've actually programmed the variable speed drives to take it up to 150 cycles a second. So I'll just give you a, an idea of what uh, the speed would be uh, when we're running with the plane ahead. 
And as you can see, we've got a soft start as well, so that uh, we've got a really heavy log in there, gives it a chance to spin up the speed, not put any load on the, the drive mechanism. So that's running at about 75 hertz. Uh, if I run it up to 150 hertz, you'll see it running close to the speed we want it with uh, normal hand turning. So that's it there. I can even go higher if I wanted to. And that's back to the speed we'd run with the planer head. Incidentally, the, the gearbox that we're using there is a, um, I think it's a 40 to 1 uh, reduction drive. And running on the back side of that, we just have a normal uh, uh, reduction pulley system. Um, so that gearbox there, surprisingly, came from an electric uh, chair, the type of chair that's used in a dentist surgery. And it was very, very old technology. Uh, that's the way they used to raise and lower the dentist chair back in the old days. Uh, it was all mechanical. These days, of course, it's all electronic. Uh, when Matty approached us about doing this project, uh, initially the idea was that we would use some sort of a cutter to, or like an electric planer or a router head, to shape the log. And it became clear that what we needed was some sort of accurate system for moving the cutter head backwards and forwards across the, the length of the lathe. Uh, I'd actually made my own 3D printer and during that process I learned a bit about linear motion and uh, the result was that um, I cast a series of aluminium V-rollers. Uh, these were then machined on the lathe and they run across a 45 degree pitch uh, angle iron on the edge of the bed. Uh, the two rollers on the front are fixed uh, in that they're bolted to a carriage. The two on the rear are actually fitted with eccentric so they can be moved uh, radially and that gives us a small amount of adjustment to take up any play across the width of the bed. Uh, system worked the first time we did it which was rather surprising and so far we haven't noticed any problem with um, uh, sawdust building up on the V-rollers. Uh, we also uh, became clear that all of the load from the planer head was directed down through the carriage and uh, and to avoid any problem with uh, deflection, we fitted an extra roller underneath which runs across the top surface of the, the frame. So that uh, when we're taking heavy cuts, all of this vertical uh, deflection is taken by that roller. And uh, as you can see, uh, we'll show you on the video later, the planer head is able to track backwards and forwards and we can move the planer head in and out using the cross slide and we can take accurate cuts across the full length of the log. So what we'll do now is just going to run the plane ahead and we're just going to traverse it backwards and forwards a few times just to give you an idea of how that process works. As you can see here, the, the quality of the finish is really good. We were quite surprised actually that uh, the surface finish would be as good as it is. This centre section you can see here is just where we did a bit of experimental hand turning. Uh, at the time we didn't have 
suitably shaped tool for doing this with, but it's worked out pretty good. So what we'll do now is we're going to put the normal tool rest in. We'll just do a quick demo with that. So here we are with the standard tool rest fitted, and as you can see, that it's just simply locked in place. We can rotate that, we can raise and lower that, and with a standard wood turning chisel, we can do any shaping on there we want. Now I must warn you, I'm not the best wood turner in the world, but we'll just give you a quick demo. So it'd be nice to have a little bit more surface speed there, but we're starting to approach the, the limit of what this motor can do. I think the, the idea would be to go up to a much larger diameter log. This is getting quite small because it's just something we started with. But with a large diameter log, the surface speed is going to be much higher. And running on that, uh, that RPM you just saw there, you know, normal wood turning should be quite acceptable. Should mention also that the, the winch that you can see here is just a standard boat winch. Uh, we modified this, we had to actually reverse the handle, put it on the other side there. Uh, and the, the gantry and the, the crane and the jib, by the way, is uh, really there so we can load these big heavy logs on and off the machine. So that's our latest video for the Frankenlade. So from the Prezo McGrath Ironworks, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me, and uh, thanks for looking at it.